Hi, today we're going to be looking at the Emporia Energy Fuse Panel um, Current Kilowatt App <clears throat> with its hardware. Uh, very inexpensive unit. I've looked at uh, many different units. This one, uh, for the price, it was actually uh, quite a bit more initially, uh, about six months ago, and the price has come down quite a bit. <clears throat> so, what you have is the main uh, the main unit. You can see it's got a transformer. You could put that inside your fuse panel or via a knockout. It's got the two uh, center tap type uh, transformers that go on the uh, the main, the two main phase wires coming in uh, for your 120 and 120 for a total of 240. Um, and then it has an expansion kit. This is what makes this unit, I think, very good. And the hardware good about it is as opposed to other units that use um, kind of guessing by looking at the signatures of the the data, looking at the signatures of the current draw, it kind of figures out what the appliances are. And that can be a little hit and miss. It's never quite 100% perfect. With this, you've got the two main uh, taps that you put on your main lines, but you also have eight others that you could put on eight individual circuit breakers. Uh, and the good part is you don't have to put two taps on a 240 line. Uh, you can just put one tap on the 240 line because generally they're balanced, um, and then you set the app accordingly. So really, you could think of it as you know eight individual uh, appliances, if you will. You know, one for your 240 uh, air conditioner condenser, one tap for say your blower, which runs on 240, um, and of course you only need one tap for your 120 volt uh, circuits. Um, so they did a pretty good job on the hardware. We're going to take a look at it, pull it apart, and see the hardware internally. And uh, we're also going to look at the app in action and uh, look at the pluses and minuses uh, of the unit. Let's take a look while we're looking at this here. Okay, so there's your price. <clears throat> when this first came out, it was, uh, I want to say, 150 <clears throat> just for this. So it's come down quite a bit. Now, they did uh, promise to give you the expansion module when it became available, which they did. They sent that out. So all in all, and you can buy this as a bundle for, um, for about $100. I recommend getting the expansion module. You're definitely going to want it. Um, so yeah, the price has come down 50, it might have been 160, I think it was 160. So it's come down quite a bit. I mean, it's it's very, very inexpensive for what you get and what it does. Um, it's a really good bang for the buck. The hardware been, um, has been very good. No complaints on the hardware. Complaints on the app though, but we'll get to that. Um, customer service is also very good. Uh, if you have a problem, you can bring them right up on their homepage. Somebody will come right up. Uh, U.S. support and chat with you, or you can call them directly. You can talk to the techs directly or sales directly. So very good customer uh, support. Um, let's take a look at how it installs. Here's the instructions uh, for the installation of the unit. Um, there's the Wi-Fi antenna. That has to be mounted on the outside of your fuse box because the fuse box is metal and it would shield it and you wouldn't get a good Bluetooth or Wi-Fi signal. So um, if you have a fuse panel that's... Um, a flush mount, uh, you know, in the drywall, you'd have to figure out how to get that antenna on the outside of it. Um, in my case, it wasn't an issue because it's in a garage. Most of them are, you know, garages, and the fuse panel, it comes off the wall. They give you everything you need. Uh, the knockout for the antenna, you half-inch knockout, you can put that right in. Um, and they, they pretty much thought of everything for the installation. Um, and then, let's see, so that, this gives you an idea. Uh, the, the taps go on the two main lines. You don't have to disconnect these lines. Uh, they separate and they clamp together like a clamp-on meter would. Um, so very easy to install. If you're not familiar with the inside of a fuse box and you don't feel comfortable with working inside of a fuse box, I wouldn't do it. Um, if you uh, Or have somebody that's an electrician or somebody that's very knowledgeable do it. Because if you touch the wrong thing in here, it doesn't matter if you shut off the main. Uh, up above the main breaker, it's still live. Um, the only way is to uh, have the power company come out and do a disconnect for you outside which is not necessary. You don't have to do that. But the point being is, if you're not comfortable inside of a fuse panel, you shouldn't be in there. Um, they give you all the warnings. Um, but if you know what you're doing, this can be installed in minutes. Uh, so it's, it's quite easy. Um, the Okay, so there's your, your AC transformer. That can be put inside the box or via a knockout and mounted externally. Uh, in my case, I put everything in the box and then you just need to put the antenna on the outside. Uh, for signal, obviously. Um, but this could be mounted outside the box. You can put the transformer on the knockout and then just run your um, your center taps inside. Uh, various ways you can do it depending on your uh, on your situation. They even give you a nice convenient little um, uh, wire attachment 
that um, will allow you to hook this to the breaker and then the wire that went to the breaker would now go to this and you can hook the transformer to that. It's like a little Y connection just to make it very convenient. Um, so they did a good job with, with the hardware. All right, let's take a look at the, the actual hardware. I'm going to take a, a look inside and, and, and see how they made this thing. Okay, so this is the unit itself. Let's get this lens cap out of the way. That's certainly not helping. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay. If we can get a focus, we'd be good. I think we're focused too. Okay, so what they have here is on the unit, you've got the three uh, one eighth inch connections for the center taps. Um, you have uh, up to three phases. Most people don't have three phases, but if you do, you could you'd have three of them. They send you with two of them, um, and you put one on each on each phase. And then your AC power in is here, and uh, then off on the side is another connection which you hook up to then go to your expansion module, which has eight connections. Uh, you know, for the individual circuit breakers. Um, yeah, and this is just a, a pretty basic design. They have a uh, ESP32 um, Bluetooth Wi-Fi. This is a standard board they use in many things. Um, the AC comes in here, goes through a four-way bridge rectifier. Here's your filter cap. And then this is a buck circuit here with a buck chip. Um, I'm assuming they have this buck to feed a higher voltage over to the expansion module. Uh, so they've got this thing down, you know, built very, very well, designed very well. This, this board and all, if I were to guess, might cost them, you know, $20 to make, um, something in that range. But it's designed well, and it works well. Let's take a look at the, uh, the expansion module, too, while we're zooming in here. Those are your eight uh, one-eighth inch female connections for those, for those taps. And nothing on the other side of the board there. Let's take a look at the app in action. <clears throat> okay, this here is, they've had many iterations of the app, and they've been improving it in some ways. One change that they made on the app um, kind of ruined it for me. Um, but I'm hoping that uh, in the future they will correct us. <clears throat> Let me explain. Okay, so what we have first, uh, as we look at the app, we have, um, you can see here, that I'm on my 200 amp main. So we're reading uh, the, the 200 amp uh, taps. Um, I can go in here. Let me bring this light down because you can see better. Yeah, I can go in here, and here are the eight individual circuits that I can select. Um, for example, okay, see now the fridge is off now, so it's reading zero. Let's go back to the main, give you some action on the main, and then we'll look at some individuals and explain some of the shortcomings of, of the app. So right now, it's reading 364 watts. Um, I'm going to, on my desktop computer, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up a video. Hey guys, I'm, I'm going to silence the audio on it. And you'll soon see that just by doing that, the CPU and the graphics and so forth are going to pull a little more current, and it's going to modulate, and you're going to start to see some data uh, from, from that video. You know, it's pulling from when the computer was idle, but just starting the video went from about 360 to... 380 and so forth. It's not a very high resolution video, but you know, you'll know you be able to see the modulation in it from the CPU. Um, after a while, you get pretty experienced. You get to know what's, you know, is somebody taking a shower? I have a tankless, uh, a tankless uh, water heater that'll pull up to 18,000 watts. You can clearly see that uh, modulating. You, you can tell how much water they're using. Is somebody using the computer? Are they even watching a video? Are they playing a video game? You get to know kind of the, the signatures um, just from the wattage, believe it or not. Um, at least I do anyway. Um, Okay, let's go over to, let me go back here and also uh, talk about <clears throat> a shortcoming. The transformers they give you um, are not all that accurate. Um, each one, with, with no, if you're pulling no current through each phase, they're going to read at 90 watts each. Okay, that's 100, you'd have 180 watts showing here, and effectively you're not using anything. So this was something they had from the get-go. And so basically, if you were to subtract 180 from my 375, that would be the accurate wattage of what I'm actually using. So kind of a big problem in itself, and I was hoping that they would, by now, through the software, and evidently they, they can't do it, or maybe they're still working on it, to get that phantom 180 watts um, removed. 
you know, if, if you know about it, you can subtract it and I can live with it and it's not the end of the world. Yes, it's going to affect my totals um, and, your, and your lifetime usage and your, your monthly usage and so forth. You could come up with a number and subtract that, you know, because it's 180 watts 24 seven. Then uh, what they did with the app, which kind of, kind of killed it for me, was when you go to the individual 50 amp taps, okay, let me give you, let's look at the individual circuit that I'm on now where the computer is on, for example. And then we can you, you sort of zoom in on it, okay? This is more of a close-up. So this is the individual circuit showing 130, 140 watts. We're not on the main anymore. We're on the circuit in the office where the computer is and the lights and so forth. Okay. Um, now, the individual ATAPs that you can run, those have um, 10 watts of phantom power. So with nothing hooked to those taps, they're going to show 10 watts. 10 watts is not much, and I could easily live with 10 watts, and you could easily subtract 10 watts from the total, and, you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world. You know, times 8, yes, it does add up, but um, I'm willing to live with that. But what they ended up doing was they changed the app in such a way that the first 35 watts does not read, okay? So they removed the 10 watts of phantom current by removing the first 35 watts, but now you don't see anything from 35 watts on down. So if I'm pulling... You know, if I go to one of my other circuits here, if I go to the refrigerator, for example, okay, it's going to read zero. Well, it's not really zero because anything under 35 watts is going to show zero with the app change. Um, and right now the refrigerator is using about two to three watts in reality. There's a light on it and I have a separate meter on it. Um, and you'd see very fine data. You'd see, um, for example, if the um, circulator fan went on to circulate, uh, air from the freezer to the refrigerator and that pulls about five six watts i'm not going to see that it's going to read zero because if you had the two watts of standby current uh you know to run the board and the light the night light uh on the fridge plus the five watts that's about seven eight watts total i'm not going to see anything here um and originally you were able to see this fine data all the way down you still had that 10 watts of phantom but you could always subtract the 10 watts from whatever you had and it was accurate but now it's nothing. You have no data. So the only way we're going to see anything here is if the load goes above 35 watts. And that's with any of your eight um, taps. Um, you know, for me, this is a problem. I mean, before I could go, I could, I could look at my water softener, okay, pulling two watts. And I could actually see the little humps um, as the gears on the timer would move the timer. And there was space in between the gears, it would pull less current. And then when the, and it would move the gear, it would pull slightly more current. So it was kind of a, a little bit of a sawtooth action going on. You could actually see the movement down to one or two or three watts. And it would scale itself for good resolution. You don't get that anymore. Um, you know, you say, well, why do you need to see that? Well, there's a lot of problems you could have in a low wattage range with an appliance that now you're not going to be able to see. Now, the hope with this is that they're going to change this and they're going to bring it back. I think the reason why they did this was that they were getting killed on the bandwidth. Originally, it was updating once every second. Uh, I'm waiting for the fridge to come on, by the way. Um, but we could look at a, a different circuit in the meantime and then go back and look at the history on it. Um, lights in office. Yeah, see, not pulling enough current, so we're not going to see anything there. Um, master bedroom, not going to see anything, even though I'm probably using 20 or 30 watts in the bedroom. It's going to show up as zero can't see the first 35 watts so that's a big problem for me um, and when I bought this originally um, you know it worked and you got the data um, here we're looking at the small bedroom and large bedroom um, we're just over the 35 watts so it's gonna give us data if we were just a couple of watts lower we'd, we'd be at zero and you can see um, there's a fish tank running so it's kind of got a little bit of a ripple here as it's moving the water you know it's not gonna be a real straight line with some loads if it was say night lights or bulbs this is a motor action and you're gonna see that little bit of peaks and valleys there that's how accurate it is and we're only on the 0 0.05 kilowatt which is close to about five watts not exactly when you run when you divide it out but um, you, you can see very very fine data but again we're over 35 watts we get it um, now my point was I think they were getting killed on the data so any data um, I think they wanted to reduce their data they were updating once every second then they changed it to two seconds, which is perfectly fine. You don't need updates every single second. So by going to two-second intervals, that saved them, you know, twice twice the data. Um, but uh, I think they were just still getting killed on data, is my thought. I don't know if this is true or not. And then when they got rid of everything below 35 watts, they probably saved a lot of data. But then the product becomes useless uh, below 35 watts. And that's data that um, I would want to see personally. 
Um, I don't know about other people out there, but to me it's very important. And it's also going to throw your numbers off um, because now, you know, if you if you have loads that are 30 watts on eight circuits, that's missing. So it's not going to add into your totals. I'd rather have the data and have the extra 10 watts that's not supposed to be there. Um, the, I, that extra 10 watts that's not supposed to be there, that can be negated out in the software. That I know for sure um, with the app. So going forward, that's fixable. But so that's the big shortcoming. The hardware is decent. Um, and, I th and I'm hopeful that they will bring this back so that you get the first 35 watts of data on the individual circuits. Um, if we go back to... Okay, so the refrigerator just turned on as I went back here. There's a peak of 178 there was. Now it's coming down as the refrigerant flow um, back pressures a little bit. You, you can see, if, if you know what you're doing, you can really read this data very well. Um, I have it hooked to a heat pump outside on the compressor, a uh, condensing unit. I mean, I can look at, you know, I can look at my refrigerant flow via the, uh, the current very well. Um, as the temperature is falling outside, every degree that the temperature falls outside, the current will drop. Um, so I can look, uh, I can see when the TXV valve um, becomes saturated and starts to modulate. Um, it sets up a sinusoidal when I'm running the heat pump. Um, as the uh, coil outside gets a little, reaches its coldest temperature, the TXV outside begins to modulate, if you know about refrigeration. I can see all of that. And that shows up because, you know, we're pulling 3,000 watts. Um, so you can see here, yeah, the fridge has started up. Um, it looks like, yeah, we, another good thing is I can, I can look at my defrost cycles. Um, I can see when the um, evaporator fan kicks on after the defrost cycle. You could see all of that in the data here um, because the fridge, you know, is generally pulls 150 watts or more. In the defrost cycle, it'll do 600 watts and it pulsates. It's adaptive defrost. So there's many, many things you could you could gather by looking at the data. I had a um, heating element on my um, dishwasher um, and the circuitry go bad. And the heating element was stuck in the on position. Whether the dishwasher was on or off, I knew it right away by this app. And then I was able to fix that. The timer, the old mechanical timer went bad. So um, yeah, that's it. Um, good hardware. Uh, can I recommend it? Well, if once this app, the good thing about software is it can be changed. So I'm hoping that they will fix this um, 35 watts and below cutout um, and put it back the way it was. If they do that, if this is really a fantastic device. Um, Hardware has been perfect and uh, the cost is, is great. Um, and, uh, you know, I suppose if you can, if, if, it, if you don't mind not having the first 35 watts, which I do, if you don't mind that, then this, this is probably for you. But at least you know what you're getting into and what it can do and cannot do at this, at this time. Um, and this happens to be, this here's your app version right here, uh, 1.6.10.116. Uh, you can also export the data to a CSV file, and it'll send it to your email. So, uh, pretty neat device. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, give us a like and uh, leave some comments. Thank you very much.